after a particularly bad flu season, the number of blood donors has dropped dramatically, with the Red Cross appealing for new donors to help boost the supply. But due to outdated regulation, there's a significant part of the population who aren't allowed to give blood. I have a blood condition called hemochromatosis. It's basically a uh, over-retention of iron in my blood. Um, left untreated, it can do organ damage. This is Ben Henry's weekly visit to the Royal Melbourne Hospital. Every week, they take out about half a litre of his blood. And every week, it ends up in the bin. Heterosexual patients who have hemochromatosis, um, they can uh, go on the Red Cross's therapeutic venisection program. So basically, when they have their blood taken out, um, it's actually able to be donated. Uh, however, because of my sexuality, I am prohibited from um, having my blood used. Ben is gay, and he's just one of many men who can't donate blood, even though they're willing. In Australia, men are unable to give blood if they've had sex with another man in the last 12 months. I've honestly had litres and litres of blood thrown in the bin right in front of me. It is such a waste. I am what I am. In the 1980s, in the peak of the AIDS crisis, gay men were banned from giving blood. In the years that followed, Australia led the way in easing these restrictions, changing this lifetime ban to a 12-month deferral period. But fast forward nearly two decades and we've fallen behind most of the world. In Canada and in the United Kingdom, they've recently had reviews where they've been satisfied that three months is uh, more than satisfactory for maintaining blood safety, uh, whereas Australia is still sitting at 12 months, a long way behind that. While Canada and the UK have a three-month deferral period, Japan has six months and Denmark four months, while Italy, Spain, Portugal and South Africa have scrapped the mandatory deferral period altogether. And what this means is that we're actually needlessly excluding a whole pool of potential donors who want to be able to get, donate blood and who are excluded needlessly from doing so. Daryl O'Donnell, CEO of the Australian Federation of AIDS Organisations. We certainly think that there must be uh, stringent blood safety, um, but it's got to be in line with the evidence. Now we know every one of us could be devastated by it. We've come a long way since the Grim Reaper. AIDS is no longer a death sentence. The prognosis of people infected with the HIV virus has improved dramatically. First of all, we know a lot more about what causes transmission and disease progression. Uh, but se secondly, uh, we have some very valuable and effective tools for both treating and preventing HIV, which we didn't have back then. Professor John Caldor is from the Kirby Institute, a leading global research institute dedicated to the prevention and treatment of infectious diseases. I believe it can be certainly reduced from the current 12 months. The deferral period for blood donation is largely based on the window period of an HIV test, the time between when a person actually acquires an infection to when the test can detect the infection. Over the years, the window period has shortened significantly. In some people it would be as short as days and you can certainly count it within weeks for virtually, every, virtually everyone who acquires HIV. In other words, the presence of the HIV virus or its antibodies can be detected in blood within two months. A period of around about three months is certainly very comfortable in terms of protecting the blood supply. We understand that people are really frustrated by this rule and we're very pleased to be reviewing it again. Dr Joe Pink is the Chief Medical Officer for the Australian Red Cross Blood Service she takes a more cautious approach. Unfortunately, even the best tests in the world are not able to um, pick up these very early infections, and that's the reason why we need to take a multifaceted approach. Medical and scientific experts from the Red Cross are currently reviewing the latest medical evidence and considering the deferral periods in place in other countries. Up, give some nice big squeezes there. We'll then be formulating a uh, recommendations which will include in a submission to the Therapeutic Goods Administration and thereafter it'll be a decision for all governments. Right now, Australia is feeling the squeeze. Colds and flu have taken their toll on regular donors these last few months. Supplies of O-negative blood have reached their lowest point this year, prompting the Red Cross to call for thousands with the rare type of blood to donate. About one in three of us will, will need to have a blood transfusion or a blood product at some time in our lives, but only one in 30 people donate blood. 
In 2011, the Red Cross Blood Service established an expert review committee who recommended the Therapeutic Goods Administration that the deferral period be reduced from 12 months down to six. The TGA rejected the change, predominantly because they didn't believe it would bring in a significant amount of new donors. Those opposed to the current deferral period say it seems unreasonable, unnecessary and discriminatory. Another 500 mils of blood gone to waste. We want everyone to be able to donate if they can do so safely. And at the moment we're excluding far too many people from being able to donate blood uh, in Australia. Get this ban removed so I can donate blood. The Therapeutic Goods Administration is expecting a submission from the Red Cross Blood Service by the end of the year and you can read a statement from them on our website.